A while ago, I was living in the Bay Area in California, and one of the most important things that happened to me during the time I was out there uh, was meeting Ben Krames, who was a deep student of rumba and Afro-Cuban music, uh, and was really, really good at explaining it and breaking it down for people that weren't inside that tradition. So that's me. I make no claim at being a, an expert on Afro-Cuban music, but I think that studying clave enriched my life and my musicality, especially rhythm, independence, precision, um, really helped me understand a lot. So I want to pass that along. Uh, I hope maybe Ben will sometime do the video on his own because uh, he'd probably do a much better job. Uh, but I want to get this information out to you right now. So I'm going to just do it myself. Yeah, so the, these are claves. Thanks to my wife, Priska Wenger, for making me this shirt. In the description below this video, please notice there are timestamps so you can skip to any part that you want to focus on. The clave is the key rhythm um, in Afro-Cuban music, and there are multiple variations. Today I'm going to be working on the son clave, the two-three son claves. Most of you will probably be very familiar with the three-two son clave because it's also the basis of New Orleans music and or a lot of New Orleans second line music and that would be right. This is exactly the same rhythm just starting on beat three in, of that which would be one. One. One, one, okay? So that's gonna be our basic timeline. And then we're gonna just do some very, very simple patterns over that. So in that timeline, we're gonna be thinking of the subdivisions of the beat as 16th notes, okay? So I'm gonna tap my foot. And the subdivisions are quite simply. Chicky, 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 chicky. Ben like to say chocolate, 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 or anything. Chicky, chaka, chicky, chaka, chicky, chaka, chicky, chaka. A really uh, clear way to think of it is one e enda, two e enda, three e enda, four e enda. Okay, sixteenth notes, right? So if I say eighth notes, it would be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and eighth note off beats are and and, 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 and the 16th note off beats are e, a, e, a, e, a, e, a. All right, so that's our basic timeline. First, we're gonna do every 16th note, and then we're gonna cut the bar into two parts and do one 16th note in each part mirrored on the other side. Then we're gonna cut it into four parts and do the same 16th note on each beat, okay? And then we're gonna do doubles uh, mirrored on each beat. All right. And then we're going to do polyrhythm over the whole thing. All right. If you see small cuts in the video, it's not because I made a mistake. It's oh, okay. It's because I made a mistake. One, two, three, four.
Here we go. Pack to one. Good. Part two. Back beat. Part three, one, two, three, here we go, and All right, now we're going to do doubles. One, two, doubles. Here we go. And... Poly rhythm, here we go. All right, and one, and now tomb bow, very important bass rhythm of this music. All right, one, two, three, here we go, and I would encourage you to also do these exercises in, in other ways. So for example, you can do right. All these different ways will Tweak your brain in different ways and really help you develop rhythmic independence and understanding. One great thing about these exercises that I always loved is that you could do them anywhere at any volume. You can put the clave, you know, just lightly in your tongue. No one has to hear it. You can do it on the bus. You can do it waiting in line, just tapping your foot very gently.
or just rocking back and forth, right? That could be the double. So I, I could be doing the exercise right now. Right? And you can do that super tiny. I don't know. There's something kind of a uh, sneaky and fun uh, about working really hard uh, on, on music when no one, no one else knows you're doing that. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm evil for thinking that way. But uh, and I would encourage you very much if, if a part of this is challenging, right? You shouldn't just try to follow me to the next part. Press pause. Use your own metronome or whatever and work on that one. You could spend all day working on one of these grooves and you could even slow down, right? Often I practice these at 60 beats per minute. Right now I'm at 84 beats per minute. 60 beats per minute is easy because if you have a watch, you could just hold it up to your ear and that's 60 beats per minute, right? You know, slow it down, focus on one. There's no prize for trying to get them all in one day. The, the only prize is for getting it feeling good and precise and uh, really locked together. That's the only goal. Totally, we want to focus on quality over quantity every single time. How does it feel? Does it lock together? If it starts to feel challenging, don't move on. Just stay right there or find the simpler one. Like, oh, that was way too hard. Let me go back to something easier. You know, the easiest one, of course, is just one, two, three, four. So if that's hard for you, you should spend the next week or two on it, you know, until it's easy for you. Then think about moving to the next one, right? I'm trying to give you all the information here, but when you're practicing it, you should stay until you're just like, yeah, okay, that's easy. And then even stay a little longer until you're like, not only is it easy, but I can turn my brain off and just float with it. That's where you want to be with this stuff. Um, it's never about like, oh, yeah, I can, I can do the hard one. No, 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 no. All right. Um, I have to remind myself that too. Another thing is that this is, you know, originally music that's meant to move people. It, it's partly worship music, partly party music. It, it has roots in um, the folklorico and Santeria and African Yoruba uh, religion and rhythms, um, but also roots in the rumba tradition, which took that into the street party vibe. Uh, so it's uplifting music. So I, it, it's it's not academic and it's not heavy, you know? So one thing, that's one of the reasons we sometimes use chocolate, you know, chocolate, 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 chocolate. It's hard to take yourself seriously when you're saying chocolate and you don't want to take yourself too seriously with this stuff. Uh, try to keep a smile on your face, um, stay humble and recognize that you're a part of an amazing tradition. Uh, and you're a part of that whether or not uh, you have any direct connections to Afro-Cuban roots, because this rhythm and this music has changed the entire landscape of popular culture. If you took away this kind of sensibility at the core, popular music would be unrecognizable to us. You can do it with or without a metronome. Both, I think, have merit. The metronome definitely is a good idea because you start feeling you know, what it is to be steady, but it's also really important to do it without a metronome so that you can develop your own internal sense of it, right? Oh wow, I almost forgot one of the most useful ones. Uh, we divided things into ha uh, two beats and then one beat, and then dividing into half beats is, is also really great, so let's just do that. One, two, three, four. That's one of the most challenging ones. So that's 16th note of beats. One E and a two E and a three E, right? Going further, you can do triples. And using the same kind of displacement that we used, right? The next one would be. Oh, I got to work on that one. Another thing to note is that a lot of times you'll see clave notated in two measures, right? So I'm tapping my foot one, two, three, four. That feels like the beat um, naturally, but 
when people are writing big band arrangements and stuff like that, a lot of times they will split clave into two measures. So they'd count it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because it gives you a lot more space to write uh, arrangements uh, for a salsa band and stuff like that. Um, it's a little bit cleaner to write, but really, if you look at the feel of it, um, I, I think the pulse is is more on that that slow uh, count. Um, somebody else would surely disagree with that. This is really an entry level, ground floor uh, exploration of this music. Again, I I claim no special expertise, but diving in a little bit like this has been massive in my life. And I want to say just two words about the power of this music. For one, uh, this music stemming from West African uh, ritual traditions was part of what helped a whole people survive 500 years of crushing slavery and oppression. Um, so it demonstrably has incredible power, soul power, um, whatever you want to call it, because um, it, it really carried a people's uh, spiritual well-being through a time where uh, of unimaginable suffering and oppression. So that's one thing about it. And another thing about it is that it has a depth that's reflected in um, in nature and 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 in the whole structure of of time and space. And uh, that's maybe a discussion for another time. Um, but uh, yeah, I would encourage you to imagine yourself a beginner in this, even if you have a, a expertise in music, let yourself be a beginner in this stuff uh, and really try to practice it perfectly. Perfect practice makes perfect. Um, no reason to over challenge yourself. Just take a little bit at a time, make it feel great. Uh, and let me know how it feels to you in the comments below. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching.